Oh, I have a very hectic schedule. I have a very busy life. Yeah, uh, basically to tell you about the unit, it's 3,600 square feet. Sometimes I find that I work 20 days straight, you know, and I'll realize I haven't taken a day off. Probably would be looking at about a 60 day close versus, okay. a, you know, versus a 30. All of my friends say that I'm probably one of the happiest people they know, and people always see me smiling. And so most people that know me, they have no idea that I've been dealing with this medical um, condition that I've had. I always knew that food could be my friend, but it also was my enemy. When I would have meals, my stomach would always hurt. I, I can't really even explain how excruciating the pain was. It has been constant hospitalizations and uh, doctor's appointments. I've lived in five different states. Every state that I've lived in, I've gone to the medical teaching hospital, the best of the best doctors. There were times when I thought, you know what? If I went to sleep and didn't wake up, it would be okay because it was so painful at times. There were, there were times when she would just be in agony. She learned to live with that pain so that, you know, most of the time you wouldn't know that she was in the pain that she was in. You know, and you want to be able to help in some way, and, uh, but it's tough uh, when you can't pinpoint the problem. He's my ex-husband now, but we're best friends because I, I, I can't even really express what it meant to have one person to be there to see how many times I took myself to the hospital, you know, or to be in bed with me when I have to use three pillows and a comforter to sleep in a sitting up position, sometimes for months at a time. You know, as we moved from one place to another, we uh, continued to go to doctors, and it oftentimes led to surgeries in order to try to alleviate the pain and also find the source of the problem, but never really got an answer. And I can even remember a situation in Indiana. The doctor, he actually questioned whether she was really sick. He began to think that maybe this was not something that was real. When I moved to Jacksonville, I reached out to Dr. Willis. One of the most troubling things about Sharon's case was I don't know that she felt that people were believing her when she said something was wrong. And this had been going on since she was a teenager. It was so wonderful to, to have him and to be heard. Giving him my records and telling him what had transpired in my past, it, it was just an immediate connection and there was an empathy there. She was absolutely having abnormal lab tests. Uh, several blood tests, including those that indicated the health of her pancreas and those that indicated the health of her liver. He knew this is something very real. He took it very seriously. He's had me at multiple specialists at Mayo trying to figure this thing out. When we looked at Sharon's case, we took a different approach to what's been done previously. Typically in medicine, we look at anatomical systems, organ systems, hearts, livers, etc., and we send them to specialists in those areas. What we're trying to do is go deeper and look at her DNA. With genomics, our focus is on the DNA in our cells that provides instructions for the work our cells can do. It's only part of the picture. By using metabolomics, where we focus on the byproducts of the work our cells are actually doing, we get a better picture of what's really happening inside the person. And in Sharon's case, what we found was very, very unusual. Her body appears to be metabolizing certain fats in a different way than normal. And we found changes in, in her metabolites that reflect that. When we went into the medical literature, we found that there's less than 10 cases ever described. I think we could take a slow but sure I finally have an answer that there is something um, medically or genetically um, wrong that has caused this problem. And for me, just the knowing, I, I can't even tell you the, um, the peace that it gives me. My mind and my head was already, okay, well now what, what do we do to intervene to fix it? Because I think we might be charting a little bit of a, a new path for this kind of thing. She's been searching for an answer for 
around 40 years and the tools that we have, genomics, metabolomics, are really at the cutting edge of what modern medicine can offer and we're trying to use that to delve deeper to see if there's anything we could do to help. It's a journey for all of us and we're very excited to see where it's going to take us. This has changed the idea of the future for me because now having that piece of information, I just feel so empowered instead of feeling like I'm walking in the dark. I, I really just want to thank Dr. Willis for not giving up and, and Dr. Atwal because I just think they can change so many lives.